Hello, this is Joe and welcome back to the channel. I've had a lot of interest in doing a video on collimating and SCT, so I thought tonight I'd go ahead and do that. Real quick, if you tear down and set up every, every night, um, you, what you want to do is make sure that your telescope acclimates to the temperature outside. Uh, otherwise, you will get some, um, like a hot spike, I guess, for lack of a better word. And it could look like your scope isn't collimated or while you're trying to collimate it, you won't get it quite right until the scope is cooled down to the ambient temperature outside. All right, so I'm going to open up the observatory. And then I'm also going to take off this lid. I'm going to go into the flats wizard because there's a slew of zenith. And I'm going to go on the west side so it's going to be close to the camera side. And I'll just let this slew up to the zenith and then we'll find a star like that one right there. And we'll just collimate on that. Now the reason I picked this side is just because I've got my table and my laptop over here and it's a lot easier for me to just look there and work here at the same time. Now we've slewed here, I'm just going to go to the imaging tab and I'm gonna set my filter to luminance and I'm gonna change this to one second. Not 11, one. And, um, it's just got the default everything, but I'm going to turn looping on and I'm going to go ahead and take a shot. And this is a pretty good star right here. So the easiest thing to do, and I got to turn tracking on my mount before we lose the star. So let's get tracking turned on and we're going to move this over here. We're going to turn this grid on so that we can get this star over to the middle and we're going to go ahead and move over to the middle and so by looping you can see that you'll see where the stars are going to move now, I don't have my mount moving at maximum I've got it moving at 64 times the max is way over 512 um, you, you want something small I might even lower this down a little bit after we get started and the important thing is, is that you want to keep the star um, as centered as possible. Um, so we could turn this off and we could tell real quickly if it's bright enough. Now what I do is, is I go into my focuser and I focus in. I don't focus out to start with. I found that with my setup, when I focus out and get a really nice, what I think is a really nice collimation, and then I move through focus and then fo to uh another donut focusing in that I'm way off so what I've done or I've learned to do is to focus in first get the best collimation I can there and then go th move through focus and focus out and make sure that it's still collimated so we're going to change our focuser right now it's on 11,421 we're going to change that to around 2,500 and that should leave us with a pretty nice looking donut. So we'll hit move there and we're going to go back to image. And as you can see as we go, the star or the donut is getting larger. I could tell we're already at a collimation because that center hole in the donut is off to one side. And the star just up above it is a little bit brighter. And I'm going to use it because it is brighter. And I'm going to take the focuser and make change it up a little bit we're going to go to about 1500 we're going to go back to the imaging tab that should make it big enough to see what we're doing i'm going to tighten the screw where the fattest part of the donut is but first i have to find it so what i do is i just hold my finger over over the entire corrector plate until it shows up on the video or on the image on the screen. So it's on that side, it's very close. Um, I think this is going to be about the thickest part of the donut here. You really wanna find the, 
the thickest part. So here we found it. And there is not a screw here. So we move to the opposite side. And you're either going to tighten it or loosen it. And I am not using Bob's knobs. I don't find it a good idea to use them because the Phillips head screws hold the collimation longer and better. So the star's moved, which we expect it to, and it's moved in the correct direction. Uh, so if you don't know which way to go, either tighten or loosen, and it kind of depends on whether you focus in or out. But so we focused in, and I've decided to make a tighten correction. I've tightened that screw up, and what's happened is, is that it has moved the star in the direction of the fattest part of the circle. So I know that that's the correct adjustment. If you see that the star moves the opposite way, you know that that is an incorrect adjustment and you need to either loosen or tighten depending on what you found. So the next thing we're gonna do is turn our target targeting circle back on, reticle, and we're going to move back over to where we were so now I'm pretty sure it's the same screw, but I'll hold my finger over that screw for a minute until it pops up on the screen. And that is correct, that is the right one. What I had done is tighten this up a little bit because it was too loose, and now I'm just gonna loosen it up just a hair. And that is not enough. And I really don't want to loosen the screw much more than that. So what I'm going to do is tighten up the other two screws. By doing that, you'll get it'll do the it'll pretty much be the same effect as as loosening up the one that we were working on. So now it's moved out of the center again, so unfortunately I, I will have to move this up, but you want it, <laughs> this is one of those things where you actually want to make sure it's moving, otherwise you're not doing anything. And if it's moving too far away, then you're doing too much at one time. So we're getting really close here, that's close enough now, I'm going to remove that reticle. And it looks like we still need to tighten up this screw or loosen up this screw just a little bit more, or tighten up the other two. And so I'm gonna loosen this one up just a little bit more. Now the reason that I would rather tighten than loosen is because when we're, comp when we're finished with the collimation, we wanna make sure that the secondary plate is snug, all the screws on the secondary plate are snugged up. And that will hold your collimation longer. So now we got to get it back into the center. So we're going to turn on the reticle again. Let's give it some slight movements here. Okay, so that's close enough again. And we're getting really close. And I think that we've tightened up one screw more than the others. And so now the donut has shifted a little bit. So I'm just going to hold the screwdriver over this screw right here for a minute until I see it on the screen. That is the opposite. So I am going to take that, actually take that screw because there isn't one on the other side and we are going to tighten it up. Now if the whole image shifts upward like it should, we know that we made a correct adjustment. And it did or it seems like it did. Actually, did it move at all? It did move that direction. So I'm going to take the other screw that we were working on and tighten it up a little bit. And hopefully the star will move a little bit. And that moved in the wrong direction. So. We know right away that we need to bring this screw back to where it was. And then we need to tighten the screw, the other screw that was opposite of that. There we go. And now it has moved towards the fattest part of the donut and is looking pretty good. 
Um, I'm going to turn the reticle back on and get it back up to center. But I think we're almost done. Now, it might be easier for you to use the hand controller. I really don't ever hook up the hand controller. And I, find, I don't find this very difficult whatsoever. Um, to be completely honest, I have no problem doing it this way. But it might be easier for, with, uh, for you with the hand controller, depending on how you're set up. Um, I've got my table right here, and I'm, I'm you know, adjusting right here, so it's, it's not a big deal for me. So now we've got this in the center again. So I'm going to turn this off. And it's still not exact. It still needs to go up just a little bit on this side. So what I'm going to do now is just loosen up or tighten up this screw. Yep, loosen it just a hair. Make sure that it moves the way it's supposed to move. It did not, it moved the opposite way, so we know that we have to tighten it. Yep, and it moved in the correct direction and is looking very, very concentric. I am going to move this back into the center now. One more time, turn the reticle on. Okay, so now we've got our star and the donut and it's completely in the center. Our secondary mirror is very snug all the way all the screws are very snug there's there's none that are real loose to touch or or even with the screwdriver they're they're pretty good in there and so this should last quite some time uh just to make sure i am going to set my focuser we'll get this around twelve thousand, and we'll just look at the images the stars real quick and make sure that they all look pretty pretty good and then we'll move the focuser out and, and bring a donut back up again and just make sure that, that it still looks good. So at this point all the stars look to be in pretty good shape. I could live with those. Alright, um, I'm going to go ahead and change the focus though and we're going to go out to about 30,000. And it looks like um, it's really good. So I hope you found this video informative or useful. If so, please go ahead and drop it a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you're a mono shooter, don't forget to go ahead and check out this video right here to see what happens when you put your filters in backwards.